Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, when all the excitement over the EU referendum has calmed down, oh, I know that you're excited, don't deny it. The next big set piece in the political calendar will be the Chilcot Report. Woohoo! Into Britain's role in the invasion and subsequent occupation of Iraq from 2003. Now, the inquiry has served as a proxy trial of the Blair government, as well as the war's cheerleaders and other parties, the intelligence community, our military readership, and Britain's special, some might argue too special, relationship with the United States. Now, the report will be published on Wednesday, the 6th of July. It's also Wednesday, meaning it will be Prime Minister's questions and a 90-minute daily politics. So brace yourselves for acres of news coverage. This is what Tony Blair had to say earlier this week. You underestimated profoundly the forces that were at, that were at work in the region and that would take advantage of the change once you topple the regime, and that's the lesson. I mean, the lesson is not actually complicated. The lesson is simple. It's that. It's that when you remove the dictatorship, out come these, these forces of destabilization, whether Al-Qaeda on the Sunni side or Iran and its militia on the other side. Now, our guest today, Peter Oborn, has just published his alternative findings in his book called, uh, intriguingly, Not the Chilcot Report. It's a lot shorter. Uh, uh, much shorter <laughs> and cheaper. <laughs> Tenor. John Rental is a long-term defender of Tony Blair's role in the war. He joins us now. Uh, welcome. Now, this is not the Chilcot Report, but since we don't yet know what the Chilcot Report is, how could you write one that was not the Chilcot Report? Well, there's an enormous amount of... I don't know if you noticed, but the Chilcot Inquiry went on for about six years. Oh, I Almost all of the... Um, <laughs> I don't just... <laughs> yes, almost we all, all of this. All of this is on public record. <laughs> almost all of it. There are bit, fascinating bits, the Blair Bush the correspondence and so forth, which aren't. But generally speaking, uh, is on public record. And so, and as was the case of the Hutton inquiry, oddly enough, it was brilliantly on public record. And so you can look at the testimony given to Chilcot and other testimony and reach a conclusion. Uh, and I, I think it's. You know, it's 35,000 words. I, I think it's quite clear. I make certain arguments. I'm, I'm not saying that Shilcott will agree with me, but at least it's something to... When, you, when, he, when he comes along, you've got this book to say, well, these are the key points. Do you fear that the Chilcott report I mean, is, is part of the motivation for doing this, that it will be a whitewash? Um, I don't think it will exactly be a whitewash, but what I do think is troubling at the moment <coughs> is that it looks like it's spreading itself much too wide. I mean, criticising... a reportedly 40 or 50 different people. Um, 2.6 million words, five times the size of War and Peace. It looks like it may be a bit of a sort of bit of Gothic architecture, which doesn't really, it's not very clear, not very focused, mm. doesn't deal in an in a intellectually lucid way with the problems raised. Now, you uh, conclude that the war was illegal. For sure. Actually, not For sure. just wrong, or in terms of aggression. foreign policy terms, or yeah. not just wrong morally. It was illegal. What's the basis for saying that? that? It's very hard to argue that uh, the Attorney General's uh, advice in, uh, in, 19, in 2003 was, was, was plausible. Uh, the Foreign Office, all 27 members of the Foreign Office Legal Department thought it was illegal. Uh, it, it, we, never got the, we never got the second resolution to justify going to war. 11 out of the 50, 15 members of the Security Council thought it was not. It was not legal. Um, I go into the legal arguments, if you like. But no, no, that, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. What do you say to that, John Rintel? Well, I just uh, I don't think Peter knows what uh, illegal means. Um, I mean, <laughs> there's a very simple... Well, it means it wasn't legal, I think. Yeah, but I mean, what does that mean? Yeah, because there's a very simple test um, to apply. I mean, you can, you can get into the legal arguments, but there's, there's a shortcut, which is that um, for 13 years since the Iraq war, uh, no legal case against the decision has even been started. And, I mean, that's the, that's the beginning and end of it. If, if, if it was illegal, then that, mean, that implies that there's some court in which it can be, can be tried, uh, and it hasn't been. Yeah, I think that's, John's got quite... Sorry. Sorry. Can I say, I think this really is the less important point. The point isn't so much whether it was legal or not. It was whether it was right or not. And everything about the Iraq war was wrong. 
the Iraq was not housing the people who had carried out the 9-11 attacks against America. It had no justification. Iraq was a country that was um, not a threat to the rest of us. And when you see Tony Blair there saying that, um, I didn't understand that if I took away the man who'd been controlling this very divided country for 40 years in a barbaric fashion, that there were going to be destabilizing forces that would rise up and turn it into chaos. You think, mm -hmm. did you never read a single history book ever in your life? I mean, the first duty of all states is to create security. Somebody wrote very um, intelligently, Thomas Friedman of the New York Times, just before the war began, he said, the danger with trying to take Iraq apart is that we don't know whether Iraq is as it is because of Saddam, or whether Saddam is the kind of brutal dictator uh, that he is because of the difficulty of keeping together a riven, sectarian country like Iraq. Now, there's nothing I liked about Iraq. Um, Iraq's regime. There's nothing I liked about that dictator, but that doesn't mean that we understood in any way how you would run a secure state if we took that system apart. It was right. sheer okay. arrogance on our part. I just want to come back to. I'm going to put that to John Rotten, but I want to come back to the, the legal point that he made because the legality is interesting, and we'll be interested to see what the legal fallout is once the Choco report is published. Why has nobody? Attempted legal proceedings against Mr. Blair. Because, because it was lawful. No, no. Uh, okay. Just a short no, I, was, no, no. Sorry. I know you believe <laughs> that. You, sir, I just wanted uh, Peter no, Oborn to look reply. at the argument of whether it's lawful or not. Uh, there are two justifications, really, under international law for an invasion of another country. One is in self defense, mm. and the other would be if there's a Security Council backing for it. Mm. Neither applied. So I understand. Reason, why has nobody yeah, then no, moved on? Come this? on to this. That if you and this is in the final advice given by the Goldsmith, that if you're a member of the Security Council, and, the, and the, we have the International Criminal Court, it is not was not in 2003 able, mm. and, and Goldsmith made to to prosecute a member state for a crime of aggression, aggressive war. And so it was, it's, it's a te really, a, you're completely right, but it's a technical point. The no, war it's itself okay. was a war of aggression. No, well, let me come on yes, to the yes, war itself. Yeah. Would it not be fair to say that as historians look back at the second half of the 20th century and Britain's foreign policy, that there's quite a consensus that by far the two biggest foreign policy mistakes were one Suez in 56 and the invasion of Iraq in 2003? Yeah, I mean, I think Iraq was was, poss was probably a worse disaster than, uh, mm. than than Suez. I don't think there's any question about that. I mean, completely agree with with Jenny that uh, the Iraq War was 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 a disaster and it had terrible, terrible consequences. But I mean, where I'm uh, where I'm so disappointed with 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 Peter because I mean, Peter and I have been arguing about this for years. Oh, I is, know. is 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 his implication that, of bad faith on the part of Tony Blair. I mean, I'm not, you know, I am a defender of Tony Blair in the sense that I regard him as having been quite a good prime minister. But you minister think he made a mistake? You think he made a mistake but there's a, going but there's into a, Iraq? There's a world of difference between making a mistake no. and, and, and doing, doing so dishonestly uh, and taking us right. to war but on, I didn't on, ask on the basis you, of a I lie, which, you is, which is what Peter, no, but that's what, that's but, what no, Peter but, but is you, But you concede it was, in retrospect, a mistake. Well, of course, I mean, it was a disaster. I mean, right. I, mean okay. I, don't, I don't want to use the mistake word because so it was bigger I think, than that, I think, think it was, no, I think it was but a reasonable decision to take it on the basis well, of the, what do you of say the to facts that, of the time. To well, you, I don't think that the Prime Minister, the, the good faith argument used by the Prime Minister is sustainable. Lord Butler called him disingenuous. Mm. Yes, I thought that was a disgraceful thing. Anyway, but the, you, if you look at the, I go through this in deep, great detail here in the book, that the first big point is that the statements made by to Parliament and in the media by Tony Blair were not the same as what he was hearing from... That's not the same uh, as... Sorry, can you just give no, me a chance? No, but you, you, know, have, you, to you, know, you, you have to substantiate No, but I'll come back to you, but you need, yeah. to, uh, yeah, you yeah, need yeah. to let him state the case. But if he's not stating... No, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> You don't get to run this. I run it. Please continue. Yeah, the, the, there is, in front of the Prime Minister, before he went and goes to Parliament, is the intelligence guidance mm. from the JIC. And it's sporadic, it's patchy, it's very, very uh, Which is provisional. clear in the Butler Report, yeah. in the appendices. Uh, yeah. And the Prime Minister comes to Parliament and on the media and says it's... And he turn, takes away the caveats and makes it firm 
and makes it clear that there are that, 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 that there is the threat and that he does possess the weapons and so forth. And I think I I think that is must be there is that. Diff I'm not saying it's bad faith, but he's misrepresenting um, the uh, intelligence. And that's where Mr. Uh, Lord no, Butler, that's where Butler used the phrase disingenuous. Yes, that is what he's talking well, about. Jamie, there's, do you, there's a lot of other stuff. Do you think it was an honest mistake, or even to use John Rental's words, an honest disaster? Or did the Prime Minister tell us things that he really knew not to be true? I think he probably believed them at the time that he said them. I think he probably thought Iraq is a threat because th that's what I've been told. And if the evidence isn't there because I believe it to be true, it doesn't matter if I exaggerate it. And I think that is scandalous mm. because I don't think um, his good faith is really what we have to question here. We have mm. to question why when you have a prime minister who's making decisions which ends up wrecking the lives of millions and killing hundreds of thousands mm. and destabilizing the Middle East. It's ignorance that we have to charge right. him with. It is Sorry. not OK to go into a situation and say and treat the rest of the world as if it's a fairy story, which you say, I'm going to take away a bad guy and then good things will happen and then right. stand back later and say, okay. I didn't well, know. John Rento, you're going to get the final word. Well, it's, it's, it's very easy to say that in, it, with, the, with the advantage no, the of time, hindsight, I'm time, afraid. Lots of no, of that, that wasn't, no, that, that, that the that, world is much more no, complicated you know, than Tony <laughs> you, you now need to let him talk. Those, those were not the arguments that were made against the invasion at I the time. Needed. Well, uh, very good, very final good point to you, I'm, John, I'm, John I'm very Rental. impressed. But I mean, I must, I must just, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that Peter has accepted that Tony Blair didn't, didn't act in bad faith. Misrepresent me as Tony Blair misrepresented the existence of weapons of mass what, but Quickly. What no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> you have to behave yourself or you'll have to go to the back of the class. But to come back to the point about, about Lord Butler calling Tony Blair disingenuous, many years after he wrote the Butler report in which he did not say that, I thought that was a, a, a disgraceful right. um, uh, way of attacking a prime minister okay. with the benefit of hindsight many years afterwards. Well, it's interesting. The war was 2003. At least that's when it started. And it still can cause tensions to rise in this little studio. John Rental, we're going to move on. No doubt we'll be back on July the 6th. I guess it will give us something else to talk about after the European referendum. I've been getting away with it all my